the truth. Oh yeah, I'll show you guys this first because this is going to be to do with the last topic for the stream. And I'm pretty sure you've heard about Coca-Cola's uh, employment uh, video recently. Well, let me just show you this just now. There we go. Right, I'm pretty sure you've all have seen this. This is from Coca-Cola's uh, employment type of videos. Uh, confronting racism with Robin D'Angelo. Try to be less white. Now, this has been talked about recently, I think either earlier today or yesterday, but it's something that I've seen, sorry, excuse me, a lot of people are talking about and a lot of people are not happy with this whatsoever. Now, you may be wondering, is there a video of this? There is, and I have it right here with this link. Let me just copy and paste that. Yeah, this is the one. I uh, just closed that just now because I showed you all that earlier on. Uh, again, again, race on the table, confronting racism. Now, again, it's all to do with uh, Coca-Cola. They're being responsible for this. This is the type of video that they were showing uh, Coca-Cola. Or well, Coca-Cola was showing to their employees uh, when they're becoming staff members. Uh, I think it's some kind of like facility at somewhere in, in America or anywhere like that. But anyway, let's delve into this real quick because this seems to be more of this anti-white propaganda we're seeing today. So let me just click on that. I'm also going to be pausing a lot again just so we can have a read through this because this is also the first time I've seen this as well. I've not watched the video, so it, it, it's like you guys and myself will be watching together. So let's read this real quick. In this lesson, white refers to a person of European descent. That's very true. Person of color refers to any person who is not of European descent. Again, that's also true. Say black, for example. Black means African descent. We all know that. The terms are used to indicate the two macro level socially recognized divisions of the racial hierarchy. Right, here we go. Right fragility, a term developed by, so, uh, by sociologist Robin D'Angelo to capture the familiar defensive patterns that white people tend to exhibit when they experience racial stress. All right, I guess it's some bullshit term that the, that the left tend to come up with. White fragility oh. is meant to capture the defensiveness that so many white people display when our worldviews, our identities, our, our racial positions are challenged. And it's a very familiar dynamic. Right? I think there's a reason that that term resonated for so many people. I mean, even if you yourself are displaying white fragility, it's fairly recognizable that in general, white people are really defensive uh, when the topic is racism and when they are challenged racially or cross-racially. So the fragility part is meant to capture how easy it is to trigger that defensiveness. For many white people, the mere suggestion that being white has meaning will set us off. Another thing that will set us off is generalizing about white people, right? Right now, I am generalizing about white people. And that questions a very precious ideology, which is most white people are raised to see ourselves as individuals. We don't like being generalized about. And yet social life is patterned and observable and predictable. Sorry, I just want to- Indescribable way. Sorry, I just want to respond to that. That statement and also that part there, uh, most white people are raised to see themselves as individuals. To be honest, ourselves, we don't want to see ourselves as individuals. Because look, this whole idea of individualism, start surrogate of smirk, uh, individualism is, was something that was coined by a certain group of people, the small hat mafia, if you will. These groups of people, see, it's completely fine for minorities, uh, blacks, Asians, Arabs, whatever the case may be, it's fine for them to come together as a collective. But white people, we're not allowed to be a collective. Instead, we're being taught the idea of individualism, which is why for this comment, most white people are raised to be to see, to see themselves as individuals. Complete bullshit. 
Yes, a lot, some white people in the world see themselves as, as individuals rather than as a collective because they're being taught that way. Because heavens forbid, white people come together as a collective. Because apparently, if that, if we were to do that, there, I guess uh, I don't know, Auschwitz two point might happen or some bullshit like that. But. Anyway, you get my point with that. So let's we'll just continue on from there. ...in observable and predictable, indescribable ways. And while we are, of course, all unique individuals, we are also members of social groups. And that membership is profound. That membership matters. We can literally predict whether my mother and I were going to survive my birth and how long I'm going to live based on my race. We need to be willing to grapple with the collective experiences we have as a result of being members of a particular group that has profound meaning for our lives. We live in a society that is deeply separate and unequal by race. I think we all know that. How we would explain why that is might vary, but that it's separate and unequal is very, very clear. Well, oh, uh, before going any further, let me just go back to, I think there was a line here. This is as true for white people as it is for any social group. Okay, let's see. Where was that? Damn it, I don't know. Uh, da, da, da. Damn it. No, never mind. What I'll do is I'll, I'll see if I can come back to that and we'll just continue on from uh, from there. Because I think it does get a bit more... Again, I haven't watched the video, but I would imagine it would get a lot more spicier the, the more we watch this video. So let's have a look at this further. While we who are white tend to be fragile in that it doesn't take much to upset us around race, the impact of our response is not fragile at all. It's a kind of weaponized defensiveness, weaponized hurt feelings. And it functions really, really effectively to repel the challenge. You know, as a white person, I move through the world racially comfortable virtually 24 seven. It is exceptional for me to be outside of my racial comfort zone. And most of my life, I've been warned not to go outside my racial comfort zone. And so on the rare occasion when I am uncomfortable racially, it's, it's a kind of throwing off of my racial equilibrium. And I need to get back into that. And so I will do whatever it takes to repel the challenge and get back into it. We make it so miserable for people of color to talk to us about our inevitable and often unaware racist patterns that we cannot help develop uh, from being socialized into a culture in which racism is the bedrock and the foundation, we make it so miserable for them to talk to us about it that most of the time they don't. But we just have to understand that most people of color that are working or living in primarily white environments take home way more daily slights and hurts and insults than they bother talking to us about because their experiences, they're going to risk more punishment. They're going to lose the relationship. They're going to have their experience minimized, explained away. They're going to cause the person to feel attacked or hurt. Oh my God. <laughs> right. Let's have a look at this point. Uh, I, I played the video a lot longer than expected because I just, I just want to, when watching that of someone like uh, Robin here, I don't know if it, if it's just me, but do you ever watch these videos like this one, um, and you just get to kind of get this feeling that the person making these points, it just sounds like they're just talking like or just making up shit as they go along. That's what just th th this comes along as to me. But this point here, as a consequence, people of color often choose not to bring up race because doing so risk punishment, long losing relationships, having their ex experiences minimized or explained away. The absolute ir <clears throat> irony in that i just the i i i, I the, the sheer hypocrisy of that because 
I just want to ask this woman, how do you think us white people feel? Because everything that's described here about people of color, oh, they don't want to bring up race, they bring up race all the fucking time. How do you, again, how do you think, if, if this was a group, if this was a white person bring up race or anything like that, everything you're seeing here, like punishment, losing relationships, and so on and so forth, you would, it would definitely happen much more to a white person than to, I don't know, someone like, uh, like Ben, you know, like a fellow white person, or rather than someone like Jamal, you know, a black person. Maybe this is all to do with like reverse psychology. I don't know because everything they're describing here, all oh, the, the minorities don't want to talk about race. You, it's something that you you could be said towards white white people. Like white people don't want to talk about race. Well vast majority of them don't want to talk about race because again for the very reasons here are so where are they getting this idea of oh it's the the, it's the people of color that that don't want to talk about race because they don't want to be punished for or don't or don't want to lose any of their friends or family for again how do you think us white people feel on a daily basis because if you're white this it would be happen way worse compared to like a black person saying these type of things guarantee you that and in that way, white fragility functions as a kind of everyday white racial control. None of that has to be intentional or conscious, but that is- Because again, sorry, just, just real quick, and just another point with that. <clears throat> again, going back to th that point there, whenever a white person talks about, say, race, demographics, or uh, change of culture, or, or anything like that, then you'd be looked at as a monster. You would have your life completely destroyed. And if you're a minority talking about these things, then you're championed as like a like a some kind of like hero within the community. Like I mean, just just look at Black Lives Matter, for instance. That to me is a prime example of that. They talk about race and, and their history all the time. But if it's like a group of white people, of course, and Black Lives Matter is constantly being promoted by the mainstream media. But if, if it's something comes up as white lives matter then that gets automatically demonized as oh i can't believe you have uh, like white lives matter you mean all lives matter that kind of thing again it's just, it's just blatantly ridiculous but hopefully we'll continue on from there oh well, another thing i would also want to point out and say i've also noticed again in the chat a lot of people are saying pressing f for coca-cola well at this point after this i definitely do will not be drinking coca-cola ever again I think for me, it's just going to be Iron Brew until they become completely cucked and then, but you never know. So, but the main point is I'm never going to be drinking Coca-Cola ever again because of this, because the fact as a company, how does this not abuse the, um, the, the discrimination laws? Oh, well, that's right. If there's a group of white people being done towards the, no, that's totally fine. Apparently. But again, could it's, it's a cliche to say at this point can you all imagine if it was the other way around if say something like oh try to be less black oh my god we would never hear the end of it it would be like george floyd 2.0 anyway let's continue on from here that is how it functions and there's a question that's never failed me in my efforts to un unpack how do we pull this off? How do so many of us who are white individually feel so free of racism, and yet we live in a society that is so profoundly separate and unequal by race? And the question that's never failed me is not, is this true or is this false? Is this right or is this wrong? But how does it function? How do these narratives that I tell, how do they function? When I tell you, well, I'm just an individual. Why can't we all just be individuals? When I tell you, I was taught to treat everyone the same. When I tell you, but it's focusing on race that divides us. When I tell you, but I have lots of friends of color. Those narratives have not changed our outcome and they function to take race off the table and to exempt the person from any further engagement. And in doing that, they function to protect the current racial hierarchy and the white position within it. It doesn't have to be what I'm intending to do, but it is the impact of those narratives.
Oh, I just I think it, who who said it in the chat? I think it's uh, Meat Face One Five Six. What's the name of this bin? Uh, that's her name there. It's Robin D'Angelo. Uh, I think possibly Italian. I, I'm guessing. Um, but uh, let's see. Term developed by. Oh yeah, that's what right or wrong. That's fine. Right, just put it on there. Wait a minute. Wait for the triggers that set off people, white defensiveness around the topic of racism include suggesting that being white has meaning, generalizing about white people. Oh, I think it does have. I, 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 I definitely would agree that there's meaning to being white, of course. Which another argument I, I've, I've been noticing recently, uh, for my part, is this idea: whenever you talk about race, especially with white people. You get some kind of like like some snarky douchebag coming up and asking you, "Well, what do you mean by white? Defend white or uh, define white for me." I mean, we all know what white means. Like, is it, white means the the European descent, like people of European descent. It's just like how uh, if you, when you say black, it, it's meaning people of African descent. We all know that. I don't know if it maybe continues on the next segment, but hold on. Most white people are raised to see themselves as individuals. Again, really would be like forced into believing that by the uh, small hat mafia. Which well, is another thing, by the way. Like, I don't know if it's in this segment or if it's later on, but there's a certain point where uh, Robin, uh, the woman in this video, of course, uh, talks about how white people feel. Uh, uh, natural of feeling superior than any other races, which again, the irony in that alone completely astounds me. Because again, Black Lives Matter, they see themselves as superior than, say, uh, than any other race. Well, certain black people within the, uh, or certain joggers within the group as well. And of course, let's not also forget the small hat mafia. They see themselves as the superior race, better than white people, of course. Uh, to the point where they want their certain country to be a complete ethno state, but I, I digress. You know that, that that's gonna get me banned. Oh, oy vey. I just I, I might have already said this, but I just honestly still cannot believe this is being taught to. A multi international corp, well, multi billion international corporation, their employees, this kind of stuff. Oh, excuse me. I, honestly, it's just unbelievable. This is what it's come down to, folks. The anti white rhetoric is definitely in full swing. When you have Coca Cola, again, this big. Uh, multi uh, multi uh, billion dollar corporation, international corporation, I should say, promoting this kind of stuff. Uh, can I get on to the next? Unlock this course with a free. Oh, Jesus. Okay. I, I don't really want to do that, of course. But uh, if, what, what might be said? All right. So, this is a course, right? Okay. It's fair to say that America has spent its entire history in a difficult conversation about race and around the world, nations everywhere have joined the, the discussion. In recent decades, this has manifested as a series of direct challenges to systematic racism and inequality that addresses the effects of white privilege. <sighs> that fucking phrase, white privilege, it doesn't exist. It's complete bullshit. Like, oh, well, before I get into that, hold on a sec. The relative immunity, white people, people of European origin, ensure relative to the challenges people of color face, in this course, Robert D'Angelo, the best-selling author of right, White Fragility, gives you the vocabulary and practices you need to start confronting racism and unconscious bias at the individual level and throughout your organization. There is no magic re re uh, recipe for building an inclusive workplace as it, it, it's a process that needs to involve people of color and that needs to go on for as long as your company is in business. But with these tools at your disposal, you'll be well on your way. Jesus. 
Oh yeah, that was what I was going to say. Yeah, okay, so this term right here, we all know what this is. White privilege, right. Everyone has made this point as well. Uh, is, this is not, of course, an original point necessarily, um, but I'll definitely will see this. Hold on. All right, okay, fine. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll just say this. White privilege is BS. It doesn't exist, okay. With this... This entire notion that all oh, white people have a certain privileges in society, complete BS, right? We all know exactly who has these special privileges in society, especially here in the UK. Because um, we definitely see the mainstream media, how they treat Black Lives Matter. We've seen the mainstream media, how they're very protective of the, again, the small hat mafia and so on and so forth. So this, and of course, we even seen what the previous... Um, topic about the uh, Asian Americans, how they're being treated, again, how that, that those instances are not being looked at as anti, I'm not sorry, as being hate crimes, or not being looked at as hate crimes, that should tell you right now who, who in our society has the privilege here. It's certainly not white people, I'll tell you that much. Oh my god, so, a few lot. <laughs> yeah, I think... To be honest, I don't think I would ever want to continue on watching that because that it's just it's unbelievable. Uh, I, I, I don't know if this will happen, but I wouldn't be surprised if someone might want to sue uh, Coca Cola for this because this is just completely disgusting, in my opinion. These are the same groups of people who want to blame div not blame sorry want to promote diversity and promote. Uh, equality and all of that but at the same time you know fuck over white people it's the same song and dance we've been hearing about for many years now and yeah you're right gammon sandwich it's okay to be white it's definitely in fact it's not just okay to be white it's it's great to be white definitely <laughs> might get in trouble for that but i don't i don't care I really don't i really don't care when i say that in this case uh jewel citizen chief Moody, might he not have the best response to the what is white anyway? He totally slayed during a uni campus event. Is that the same event he was with um, Richard Spencer? Because I think I might have seen that before. Uh, and I've also seen Mark Collette address that certain argument as well. You know, the whole, well, what is white anyway? You know, define white for me, that sort of argument. So. Uh, white Western kind humans indigenous to Europe. <laughs> uh, Bent McBent face. <laughs> uh, Phil Brown. Hello, sir. How? Oh, thank you for watching the stream. Italian via Israel. <laughs> uh, Charlie Kirk. I love Israel. <laughs> oh, for Jesus, Lady Jane Grey strangle her someone. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Uh, but yeah, I mean, overall, folks, uh, don't support Coca Cola at this point, whether it's the official Coca Cola or I don't know about maybe Bars Cola, because again, I, I would imagine that's like two separate companies. But by this point, when it comes to the official Coca Cola, I will never be drinking that anymore. Definitely can guarantee that. And then this whole white privilege. Like, again, white privilege is just absolute bullshit. We all know that. Hey there, this is Chief Moody. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this video, then you know what to do. Hit that like button, comment down below, share this video. And if you're new to the channel, maybe hit that subscribe button and click on the bell icon for more content. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. This is Chief Moody signing out and I will see you all next time. Take care.